All right. Um, today we are going to talk about connecting our PHP code with a database. Uh, database interactivity is sort of uh, one of the top reasons to have server-side scripting. It's one thing that you can't really do on the client side. Or if you could do it, you wouldn't want to. First of all, if you tried to do it on the client side, that would require you having to send to the client the credentials to log on to your database. And I think you can see why that would be a problem, a security issue. So even if you could do it, and even if you could connect and, and have JavaScript or some other uh, client-side uh, scripting language uh, to do database connectivity, even if it was possible, you wouldn't want to do it. All right, so database interactivity is uh, strictly on the server side. Now, it's a, it's a good time to review exactly what we mean by server, because when we talk about database interactivity uh, on a website, there's actually a couple of servers involved. So if we have our client connected through the internet, to our web server, And the web server is accessing then a database server. You don't access the database directly. You make requests to a database server. And that is what is connected to the database. So a server is simply a computer system that listens for requests and responds to requests. So in the case of a web server, it listens to requests for web pages and responds to web pages. The web server itself is a client of the database server. And the web server makes requests to the database server and the database server responds to the web server's request and gives them the data that it needs. So that's kind of how the setup is in this case. And again, that requires the web server to be able to connect to the database server and know the credentials, the proper login to connect to it, and so on. All right. And you're not going to connect directly from the client to the database server. That would be uh, technically a problem, and worse than that, security-wise, it would be an issue as well. Okay, so the database we're going to use in this class is uh, MySQL, all right? And it's a free open source database, and if you have installed XAMPP, you have also installed MySQL. Uh, XAMPP uh, the, the M in XAMPP is MySQL. So usually uh, XAMPP is considered to be uh, Apache, that's the A, MySQL, and PHP or, or other stuff. So that's the P in XAMPP. All right, so, but what you are going to need to install is a piece of software called MySQL Workbench. And this is not a database class, so we're not going to go into details with the database, but it will be good for you to get a bit of experience dealing with the MySQL database and uh, maintaining and administering it. So I already have that involved, uh, installed. So if I go and pull it up, what I get is something like this. You go there, there'll be the MySQL connection. You should see this here when you, when you fire up MySQL Workbench after you've installed it. And I believe if you install MySQL through XAMPP, the, the root password is 
a, is an empty string. So you should not have any password. I don't believe there is a password if you install the XAMPP. This was installed and it does have a password and I'm gonna go in and change it uh, in a minute to make it uh, a little easier for me. So I'm gonna click on this. This will, this will connect to the server, which is localhost 303, logged in as the root and it's gonna pass it the password to connect to it. One thing, by the way, this web server and database server could be the same physical machine or it could be two separate machines, all right? So a large organization, maybe they have a database server that is different than a web server and the two need to communicate. So one of the pieces of information you need to know is what is the, uh, the URL or the IP address of the web server that you're trying to connect to and what is the port that you're connecting to. And again, in this case, it's localhost 3306, which is the default. So I connect to this and I get logged in and I see a whole bunch of stuff. All right, I see a whole bunch of stuff. I'm connected to the local instance. I can click on server and see the server status. And It tells me information about the server. And again, it's not, it, the server is running. Uh, not much traffic because I'm the only one on this machine and I'm not really doing much, but the server is running. So you do need to make sure the server is running. By the way, you have to have MySQL installed first before you try to install MySQL Workbench. If you, if for some reason you don't, do not have MySQL installed, like if you didn't install XAMPP, then you need to install MySQL first. I will include more instructions about this in the week 13, uh, week 13, uh, um, module in Canvas. Now, there's something here called schemas, and schemas are essentially your database. And right now, the only thing that they have is the systems database. That's sort of the, the control database for the whole uh, database server. And it contains things like the system configuration and things such as that. We're gonna create our own schema for our application. All right, and I'll show you how to do that in, in a minute here. First thing I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna change the uh, root password just to show you how that's done. If you go up to server, users and privileges, you can select the root and you can give it a password. Since no one else is going to be connecting to the server and it's not containing sensitive data or anything, I'm going to give it a real simple password that I'll remember. Simply password. It warns me that it's weak. You can even omit the password if you want to. All right. And then I click apply. Oh, it's forcing me to have a password with eight or more characters with mixed cases. Okay. With mixed cases, letters, numbers, and oh, it's telling me to consider that. All right, so I, I believe it made the change. It's just giving me a warning there. But I did click apply. Let's try that again to be sure. All right, I think it did that. I think it made the change, but we'll keep it. 
we'll keep it open just in case we need to go back and change it to something else. I think despite this, it made it made the change. All right, now I'm going to make available for you a script that is going to create a database and populate it with some data. So you don't have to do that. And that data will be in the week 13 module. So this is the source of the data and this is my sample database. So I click on that, I download it. I extract it. And I have this script in a SQL file. If I look at this, you'll see a lot of instructions for this tutorials database. So we have comments here that just says different things about it. It's, it came from this website and so on. We have more comments. First thing it's going to do is going to create a database called Classic Models. It's going to set per, some parameters for that. The rest of the instructions are going to use that Classic Model database. If there happens to be a table in here called Customers, I'm going to drop the table and I'm going to recreate it according to this. This allows us to run the script more than once and not cause any problems if we try to run it more than once. We're going to create a table called customers. And those of you that have taken database uh, know primary key and other keys, and it tells us that it's creating a primary key and it's setting up foreign keys. We're adding into the customer a set of data, a bunch of data here. We're going to create a table called employees. We're first going to drop it if it exists. And this is the structure of the database table. And then we're going to insert some rows into that table. We're going to create a table called offices. And we're going to insert some data in there. We're going to create order details and so on. It's a big script, does a lot of stuff. So this will save you from having to type all this in. You can just run the script and it will uh, add the stuff to it. So I'm going to go into SQL Workbench and I'm going to go up here and I'm going to click open up a SQL script file in a new query tab. So I click this, it'll ask me to Find the SQL script, go up here, it's in here. I open it and I have the script in this tab, the same script. Now I'm ready to run it. So I will click execute the selected portions of the script. I could only select like a line or two, like I could just do this if I selected just this but I'm gonna not select anything and then it will execute the whole script. So I click this and it shows you what it's doing. All right, and it has created a bunch of tables, dropped the tables and has inserted a bunch of stuff. Now we won't see this immediately over here yet. We have to refresh it. So if we say refresh all, then we see the classic models database. If we click on expand tables, we see all the tables that were in there. If we click on this, we can right mouse and say, show me the first 1000 rows in offices or show me the first 1000 rows in customers and so on down the line. So we have successfully created the database. All right. 
that's the extent of our usage of of uh, MySQL Workbench. You don't really need to do anything more in MySQL Workbench uh, than that. We just want to create the database. All right. For grading purposes, and when I make the assignment, I'll put it in. For grading assignments, I want you to give your database root user the password of password, all lowercase. That way, I don't have to go and change it for mine. I'll set my database set up that way and I'll be able to run your script. So now what we've done is we've set up this stuff. We've set up our database on the database server. All right. And now we can write code on our web server in PHP to access that database. So. Let's see if I downloaded that yet. No, I didn't. So the code that accesses the database is in this offices.php file. Click that. I'm going to download it to the desktop. So that PHP file is now on the desktop. Where do I need to put it? Again, if I just double click it, it's not going to do anything. I have to put it in my web server root directory. And again, if you run XAMPP, you should know where that is. If you're not running XAMPP, if you're running Microsoft IIS, by default, it is C INET pub www root. So I'm going to copy that over here. And let me run it and show you what you get. So, localhost, offices.php, and you get a list of offices. And we can look at the list within MySQL Workbench and make sure we got the right things. We have like one, two, three, four, five, six, Frisco, Boston, New York City, and so on. And we can go and look at that table. San Francisco, Boston, New York. All right, so it lines up. So we pulled it correctly. All right. So we have successfully done the whole loop. We set up our database. We populated it using the script and we wrote code to access it in PHP. Again, by necessity, this code would be server-side code, so it would be written in some server-side language. All right, let's look at the code that does this, and then let's talk about what could possibly go wrong, because a lot of things could go wrong, <laughs> or a few things could go wrong. I don't know, maybe not. Well, you got to get everything talking to each other. That's one of the disadvantages of modern uh, component software, where each you have a bunch of components and each does a little bit of the job, is that you have to make sure they're talking to each other correctly. So we have to make sure that the web server is talking to the database server correctly. Because the database could be set up right, the web server code could be more or less right, but if the communication lines between these are not correct, then it's not going to work. So let's look at that code. And we're just going to do this. We're, you know, we're not going to, I'm not going to expect you to become an expert at this, but we are going to cover enough of this so that you can write a simple query. 
All right, let's look at this. This is our PHP page offices. So we have some HTML code up here. Over here, we have the four things that you need to connect to a MySQL database. Provided you have set it up on the default port. All right, which is 3306, I believe. We have the host name. The host name is, is either the, the name, the, the, the name or the IP address of the database. You could put 127.0.0.1 or localhost. Both of them mean that the MySQL database is running on the same, on, on this machine, as the same machine as a web server. So if I put localhost in here, Save it. It works the same. Or you could put 127.0.0.1. I have found one case in my Akron class where it did not work if I used localhost, but it worked if I used uh, uh, the 127.0.0.1. But I was using a different way of connecting than this way, so I'm not sure what that means. All right. Now, the username is root. Password is lowercase password, and you should make your password in your database lowercase password as well. And finally, the DB is the name of the database that you're connecting to. Database and schema meaning the same thing. Classic models. So that's the credentials that you need to connect to the database. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the pipeline to the database. So we do that by creating a MySQL connect, uh, by executing a MySQL connect and creating a connection object. So my connection object equals my SQL uh, my SQL I connect, and I supply the host name, the username, the password, and the DB. Or die. This is what happens if we get an error doing that. Result equals. MySQL LI query using this connection that we just set up, and then we have a SQL statement. I don't expect you to have memorized all of the SQL statements or to know them all. Uh, some of you have taken probably CISS 143 uh, or 243 where you get in the SQL statement. Some of you have not, but select star from offices means Give me every row and every column from the offices table. So this is going to give me essentially a two-dimensional array or a table of data. There's going to be rows of data, and each row of data is going to contain all the fields in the office, and there'll be a row for every row in the database. So each row is going to contain an office code, a city, a phone, uh, address line, and so on. Or die. So if that fails, this is what we get. We're going to echo a T a table TR with THs and stuff in it. And here's the loop which outputs each office. So for everything, while there is something left in this results, well, in other words, while there, while there are rows left in the results, reading through those rows, we're setting X to the next row. So X is an array that contains 
all the columns in one row. That is all the columns for one office. We're echoing our TR, TD. We're echoing the, uh, the element city, TD, and the element phone number. So we're outputting for each row, the city and the phone number. So if we look at the HTML that this generates, we'll see the results of the echoes. We create the table with the THs. Then for each thing in the offices table, we create a TR, the first TD containing the city element from that row, and the second TD containing the phone number for that row. This might be a little tricky, uh, tricky syntax. We have a while loop, which means that we're going to do this as long as this is true. As long as we can get the next row. In other words, as long as there's a, a row left in the array. We're going to execute this loop. So as long as there are offices left in this array. We're going to. Continue looping through as soon as we're done, then this statement is going to be false. And that means that there are no more rows. There are no more offices. So we drop out. All right. So that's how this works. It's surprisingly simple other than a few things. 1st of all, getting your database set up and configured. Is a little bit of an issue, but I've given you a script for that. You should just be able to download uh, MySQL Workbench and be able to run my script and it will create the database for you. Other than that, these are the three lines that are different. Creating the connection, doing a query, and looping through.